This is a variance question that has multiple inputs. And so this is a question that can become very, very complicated for us very quickly if we allow it to. But we understand what we're doing here. We understand what these variances are. And so this question isn't going to become complicated for us. So let's read the question. Conroy Inc. manufactures a product by mixing two materials as shown by the following standards for one unit of finished goods. Okay, these are the standards. Material A, four ounces at $1.50 per ounce. Material B, six ounces at $2.50 per ounce. Conroy actually produced 25,000 units of finished goods using 105,000 ounces of material A and 145,000 ounces of material B. The actual cost of the materials were $1.48 per ounce for material A and $2.55 per ounce for material B. Now the question is, Conroy's direct material yield variance was how much? There's a lot of information here, and to answer this question, we don't need all of it. And so this is a situation where if we look at what the question is asking, and we understand what that question is asking, then we're able to sort through all of the information in the question and get what we need and only what it is that we need. So the yield variance, what we're looking at with the yield variance is we're going to, this is part of the quantity variance. The quantity variance breaks down into the yield variance. And what we're looking at here is the total quantity. Okay, what is the variance, what part of that quantity variance is caused by the fact that the total quantity of inputs was different than it should have been. So what we're looking at here is the total standard quantity and the total actual quantity. Okay, now let's just go ahead and figure out what this is before we get into anything else. Okay, before we get into anything else because the formula that we're going to use is actual quantity minus standard quantity multiplied by that weighted average standard price of the standard mix. Okay, but let's see what we've got here with the total standard quantity and the total actual quantity. We're talking here in total about material A and B, both of them together. Now, they actually produced 25,000 units and they used 105,000 ounces of material A and 145,000 ounces of material B. So in total, they used 250,000 ounces, actually. Now, what was the standard? Well, they produced 25,000 units and they should have used four ounces of material A and six ounces of material B. So for those 25,000 units, they should have been using 10 ounces per unit in total. And so what we have that 25,000 units times 10 ounces per unit, they should have used the standard was 250,000 units, 250,000 ounces. So the total standard quantity and the total actual quantity were equal to each other. It's zero variance. And so the answer has to be zero. Okay? There was no direct material yield variance. Now, let me point something out here. I'm sure I'll have said this. You've heard this elsewhere from me. Rule of zero. If one of the choice, what's the exception? What's this going to be that's going to cause zero to automatically be the correct answer? Now, in this case, what causes it to be the correct answer is if the total standard quantity and the total actual quantity are the same. So we don't even have to go through that calculation of the weighted average standard price of the standard mix. We don't have to do that. All this information about what the standard price was, what the actual price was, unnecessary. Now, if this question had asked us about the mixed variance, yes, then we would have had to do some more calculations, but it wasn't. The question was about the yield variance and the actual total standard, actual standard quantity, um, the actual total quantity and the standard total quantity were the same, which means that the answer is zero. There was no yield variance for Conroy.